is what we call hater shit. There is no better term. Why does she do this? Okay, we got a dirty bottle breast pump. What is it? Instructions. Well, Heather prefers Walgreens. We know the fucking phone number, the prescription. I mean, why do you dox yourself? It says, in my soft mom era, I want all the love, peace, and happiness. I will not deal with anything or anyone that stresses me or brings negativity into my life. So, Heather says, June 11, 2024, HLG. Please, God, continue to guide and protect my family and I. Keep us on the path of happiness, restoration, reunite us in success and prosperity. Amen. Reflect, empower, unite. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Reflect. Of a surface or body, throw back heat, light, or sound without absorbing it. When the sun rays hit the earth, a lot of the heat is reflected back into space. Think deeply or carefully about he reflected with sadness on the unhappiness of his marriage. I can't stand these. Empower. Verb. Used with object to give power, pow, power, <laughs> to give power, pow, power, or authority to authorize, especially by legal or official means. I empowered my agent to make the deal for me. The local ordinance empowers the Board of Health to close unsanitary restaurants. Wealth empowered him to live a comfortable life. Fucking a unite. To join together as a group or to make people join together as a group to combine. <laughs> Six luxuries in life. Time, health, a quiet mind, slow mornings, ability to travel, a house full of love. It says, I don't know who needs to hear this, but that lesson will repeat itself until you learn it. Wow. Th that's exactly what Heather needs to hear. And really break it down in her head. It's so crazy to me. Too many people burn out because they want to look successful instead of being successful. Oh my goodness gracious. Can we please get a picture of him? We just gotta like push your freaking titty out. He's like, no thanks. I'd rather suck them on fingers. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is my current breast pump. The Medalla pump in style. This is what the pump actually looks like. And you hook the valve up here. And then you use these two bottles to kind of collect the milk. And then this is my backup pump, the wearable Peru. And I'm about to open this now and then do a comparison. So this is how they look. Definitely not discreet. Um, but <laughs> you could wear it when you're driving, I suppose. Um, I have mine all the way to setting eight. The Medela usually would have created, like, pardon my hair, usually would have created, like, I don't know, probably an ounce by now. So we're going to see. The suction doesn't hurt. You can hear it. So it's not silent. It's not as quiet as, as I thought it was going to be. Um, but it's not bad. And it's definitely something good to have if you're commuting or moving around or, um, you know, driving or you can't get to an AC adapter and it stays charged for two hours. So I'm going to, I'm going to see how much milk I can get. Um, usually I pump between like five and six ounces every three to four hours. So that's how it sounds. So as promised, we're reviewing the Peru wearable with the Medela. 
um, pump and style. And I finally took the Peru out and washed it in really hot water and charged it up. And this is the pump. You do a long press to turn it on, increase and decrease suction with the up and down buttons right here. And then this is the collection container. So it slides in like this. Um, you have this part, the flange that goes over your nipple. You have this part, the valve that slides into the collection container. And then this, which also goes on this side of the collection container. So, so there are a lot more parts and then this. They call a diaphragm and it goes into this piece. So there are a lot more parts to wash, um, but it's wearable. You can wear it while you're driving. You can wear it while you're pretty much doing anything. They give you some bra extenders and a um, one charger for each. Shelf life, I mean, battery life is two hours. Since I'm not panicking, I mean, I am panicking. I'm panicking 24 seven, are you kidding me? My normal life is living in my own home with my children and driving my own vehicle. And in the last four years, I've been sexually assaulted, beaten, robbed, left in a tent, locked in a tent, beaten up by a man, um, robbed again, sexually assaulted again impregnated, lost a twin pregnancy, had oh a baby. Gosh. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm fucking panicking. I'm always panicking. I'm looking for law enforcement and the authority to do their job. I'm looking for my friends and family and peer groups to do their jobs. I'm looking for advocates to do their jobs. Yeah, I'm panicking. I'm always panicking. But I'm, I also have to live. You know, I have four children. You wouldn't know. You would not know she had four children. I'm breastfeeding and weightlifting increased testosterone and that decreases milk supply so i'm doing cardio only and and some small body weight exercises moms are selfless i'm the mom oh yeah okay hitter is nothing that i want more than to feed my son you guys know weston is still a baby three months old he'll be four months in a week from this monday why you always gotta hide Xavier? I feel like he gets in trouble if he's in front of the camera. We like to see you. We want to see you. Step in front of the camera, boy. Don't let her hide you. Don't run away from it. Is nothing that I want more than to feed my son. You guys know Weston is still a baby. Three months old. He'll be four months in a week from this Monday. Fifteen weeks this Monday. But I also really want to go to the gym. So I have to be self- I love it whenever it cuts her raw. Because it's like, oh, and we're done. You're done. It's the first of the month. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Okay, this YouTube video is called, This Officer Again Refused to Offer Any Insight Has Been the Situation for the Last Four Years. She's in a tent in this video, but it's an old video. I don't know why she uploaded it again. The comments are turned off. It's a five minute video. Let's, let's see how much I can do. Um, 2019 to 2020, police had to respond like six or seven times during that time. And there was a white shirt on duty at that time. And I really need his help. Um, I'm still dealing with the effects of, of the abuse that I was suffering during that time. Um, that officer took me to Illinois Masonic for some of my, um, wounds, I guess you could call it. And I really need to, to contact him. Is there a way that you could give me his email or his name or some way that I could um, speak with him? I don't know. It was it was the only white shirt. It was the only white shirt who responded. I just have a video. <coughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Would the hospital be able to tell me? Because he brought me there. So wouldn't his name be there? <laughs> yeah, well, no, because medical records, the, the law for my, my bachelor's degree is in medical law. Oh and, my ethics, God. and I know for a fact that the law for medical records, electronic medical records are kept indefinitely. Anything written down on paper can only legally be discarded after, uh, I think it's 10 years. Um, at the least, it would be eight, definitely, depending on your state. What is she 
trying to prove. But if I get his name, can I call you back? An email? An email? No, so yeah, I'm I'm incredibly intelligent and attuned. I have multiple lawsuits uh, against numerous people. He brought me to a place um, after I was human sex trafficked, beaten, um, left outside for several hours by my significant other in shorts during the winter, um, locked in a bedroom with a padlock on the outside of the room. Um, just a lot of really fu- messed up stuff that was going on. Um, and he's really one of the only witnesses to all of that that was happening besides he didn't he didn't I have not been able to obtain no sir nothing and that's that and I don't want to call it corruption because I don't want to implicate any of you guys as to doing something bogus but it feels like corrupt um with reaching with reaching that gentleman who was there who can testify on my behalf (coughs) that's a lie that's a lot so you're saying that in this 2024 where we have electronic medical records electronic police reporting numbers and electronic records of pretty much everything you do from taking a shit to purchasing a house that there is no way for you to identify the officer who was there for less than four years ago okay and i'd like you to please i'd like you to please go on record as as stating that what was your name again officer what Officer Jordan. Okay. From 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 what listen, district? Listen, listen, I'm trying to help you. If you need help right now, then we can send the officer out. If you feel like you need help. From medical from what right district? Now, what district are you in, sir? Nineteen. And what was your I name and badge number? Already. And what was your name uh, and badge number? Jordan four five six nine, okay? Okay. I, I truly hope that you don't get any unwelcome visitors in the night. You have a good oh. night. Oh, kill that motherfucker oh. all right so you guys see what i'm dealing with why would she put that on herself she put that on her youtube herself six days ago why you literally just threatened to off an officer and you just put it online again heather i truly hope that you don't get any unwelcome visitors in the night you have a good night Kill that motherfucker. All right, so you guys see what I'm dealing with? And this has been every single time that I have placed a call to any one of the responding offices after I am raped, beaten, robbed, left in the fucking street, sexually assaulted, dragged around. Do you see what I'm saying? She's so loud. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, this is so unlawful. How the fuck do you get off four years after the initial occurrence still treating me that way Refu- blatantly refusing me information that is supposed to be public knowledge anyone want to make it make sense i swear to god i hope god please forgive me for saying that i hope that guy dies during the night i really do feel that way in my heart god because he is a motherfucker to god i hope god please forgive me for saying that i hope that guy dies during the night i really do feel that way in my heart god because he is a motherfucker and there are lots of things he was saying subliminally that what? many of the other officers have been saying to try to turn me up or hurt my feelings or whatever i really i really god want you to please put me in a space where i do not wish death upon or torture upon the people who have murdered or tortured me i would like to be a bigger person than they who murdered you who murdered you you came back after life what the heck someone done murdered her ass and she is still with us today and I would like to use my experience to help others without causing further detriment to myself, my family, my children, or my situation. This is one example, you guys, one example of thousands of calls that I have placed. They are all responding that way. The best response I've gotten is just for the officer to sit there quietly and listen. And then they basically just say, well, we don't know how we can help you. And this is four years of this. And we're in the United States of America. Can someone please make this make sense, please? 36 weeks pregnant. Um, basically, the situation remains um, the same as it was the last time I gave you guys an update. Um, 
after spending nearly two years searching for housing, uh, calling 311 on a regular basis and being blatantly denied assistance, going into emergency rooms um, for the purpose of enlisting in the help of social services um, and numerous other resources, the whole time seeing my regular primary care physician to update him on the situation, um, looking to local law enforcement for instruction on what to do How um, annoying. with no assistance, Xavier and I made the best of the situation and set up a tent um, for the last half of my pregnancy to prevent preterm labor. Um, the first half of my pregnancy, Xavier and I were carrying and pushing 300 pound, 200 pound carts full of our luggages um, to go visit my children and Hello. drop off food and give them hugs and say hi, et cetera, and so forth. And that was my first, you know, this is my first experience of homelessness. So uh, it's been awful to Why say the least. Hair like um, I would not wish it on anyone. And as I've said so many other times in 2024, no one should have to be homeless. Um, we have the resources no one should have to be outside homeless. You know, it's just not acceptable. Um, I gave birth to my son Weston in February um, and I'm not permitted by court order to discuss what is currently going on with my son. Um, I think that that in itself is or should be unlawful. I use social media for advocacy, for documentation, um, to find a lawyer who can help me. Um, and not being able to discuss what's going on is incredibly difficult. Um, I, I am, you know, very bothered by the situation. I, I do see him, um, but not quite enough. Uh, we were accepted into housing two days after he was born, as we were told we would be the entire time I was pregnant. So um, every single time we would go for help, they would basically just say, call 311, and we would call and no one would come. Um, we were at Rush Hospital and we called 311 and waited 17 hours and no one ever showed up. Uh, we were at Northwestern and we were actually on two different occasions asked to leave the hospital and told that sure. we could not wait for 311 there because, and this is a direct quote from social services, they had not had any success in 311 picking up homeless people since prior to COVID. Um, I don't okay, believe so that. that was 311 uh, from Northwestern Hospital. Um, and they wouldn't even let us sit there in the waiting room and I was pregnant. So around 28 weeks, I ended up having some signs of preterm labor. Um, the hospital just tells you to go back home and rest and stay on bed rest. They do not offer you any sort of room or housing. They literally turn you away. I know because it happened to us on a number of occasions. I went live and shared it. I took content there. I have witnesses. I have the medical records. I have the social service records and I have no reason to lie about that. Um, so we ended up making a room, you know, for us with a tent. Um, and I put it in at Belmont Harbor Yacht Club on like the line of the private side versus the public side. I called law enforcement weekly and gave them updates, letting them know where we were um, and updating them on my situation entirely and asking for assistance and direction with regards to housing. Now, Weston was born and we got into housing, into a family housing uh, situation. And we were told that we would be there for two weeks and then taken to a six month um, shelter. And from the six month shelter, we would get an apartment. Um, so we are currently in month four of the six month shelter. Um, and we received a letter, they, they passed out a letter that said, um, the, I guess the funding uh, was coming from someone called Equitable Solutions and that Equitable Solutions would no longer be funding the housing as of June 30th. Um, so as of June 30th, they're either going to get What's gonna happen? some sort of funding from another source or move us all to different locations. Oh my gosh. Um, Xavier and I are still together. We've been together since uh, August of 2022 at which time he approached me and told me that his brother worked for the district attorney, that he was there to, you know, protect me and uh, keep. She really cannot go very long. Like, she knows when to shush and be quiet, you know, but she can't go too long until she gets so bored and she has to make up the chaos. She has to start back up with they and this happened to me and abuse and torment and 
sabotaging and corruption and it, it's I don't know if she's doing it because she's extremely bored or if she thinks for some reason it might help her with the baby but obviously it's just gonna make it worse Two, at which time he approached me and told me that his brother worked for the district attorney that he was there to you know protect me and uh, keep me safe uh, and that his district attorney brother was going to be helping us out with all of the rest of this situation. Um, so we have not made much progress there, although, you know, we are in court. Um, so I'm just hoping and praying on a regular basis. Uh, I have a regular church now that I've gone to for about four months. Um, you know, never missed a beat. I'm enrolled in numerous classes. I'm taking every one of the services that they recommend, whether they're relevant to my situation or not. Uh, mainly because I'm being extorted to do so. You know, if someone tells you do this or I'm going to take away your child, you're going to do it, you know, and, and that I've been sharing with law enforcement and the general public that that's been my relationship since 2015 when an officer by the name of David Shepard um, told me you are going to call me. I had no criminal record um, and I was not, you know, being held on any charges or in any sort of custody. And he told me that I was going to communicate with him on a regular basis or he was going to, quote, take away my children. And my children lived with me full time no, they uh, from their births all the way until 2020 when all of this began. So uh, that was, you know, 14 years of being a full time mother. Um, and as soon as all of this, you know, drama began, I was in a matter of, you know, one year unlawfully thrown into the street. My car was defaced and destroyed. I was bludgeoned with a tire iron. I was jumped and stabbed 11 times. Um, I was, I already said unlawfully thrown into the street. I filed for an emergency order of protection at 555 West Harrison and I was blatantly denied. Um, they wouldn't even let me see a judge. I came in with my petition saying today's my court date and I was sent to the clerk's office and told quote, your court date's been rescheduled. A manager is going to call you. Um, I refused to leave and asked for the manager to talk to me right then. They said they were busy. I signed in, took a photo of the sign in. She had witnesses that, you know, saw me sign in because I didn't want to be in a, in a position later to be cornered into saying, well, why didn't you? I certainly did. You know, there was something else going on. And when I got home from that court date that day where I was not able to see a judge, law enforcement was in my home telling me, pack your belongings and leave um you know you're not welcome here and i said you're i have not a lease to be here. here and i'm legally allowed to be here and i have you know my mail comes here so all of the ways that we in the united but you states didn't of america live there, established Heather, your residency name was not on that lease as a tax paying citizen as a rent paying you know i was in a relationship at that time my, my husband was dylan and um you know i say husband because we had a prenuptial agreement and uh, you know, we were together in a long-term committed relationship. Um, you know, we were legally entitled to be there from all aspects of the law. So I said, you know, in a desperate effort to receive assistance with understanding how that could have taken place. Uh, and then Xavier comes into my life after all of those victimizations, and he has been keeping me safe and protecting me ever since then. The situation has not been perfect. Um, Weston was sent by God. His middle name is Mateo because I said, you know, he is a gift from God. I, I was running low on steam and losing my will to live. Uh, anyone who's been held in a tent for any length of time. But you're not using him you, to live. Terrifying. You have no protection from the outside world. No, um, we were regularly uh, bothered. Uh, if it wasn't by regular people passing by, it was by drug people who would, you know, come by and try to offer or uh, you know, solicit drugs from us or to us. Uh, and neither myself nor Xavier use drugs unless you include marijuana, which I don't use anymore, but Xavier sometimes mm. does. Uh, it has been incredibly work? difficult. The situation has been very, very painful. Um, I have an education formally in the background of medical law and ethics, medical administration and new business development. Um, I started my education at College of DuPage, transferred to uh, Triton College, and then transferred to a four-year university, American Intercontinental. Um, I've also taken a number okay, of... Okay, stop. I can't, I can't even get over her. She, she's just like a roll of repeat. She's just on... To, just whatever. The wee. The, so she just said Xavier smokes sometimes...
but not as much as like he used to, and she doesn't smoke at all. How, if they take a test, is the weed legal there? Like, does they have like, like if he has their card, would he be allowed to smoke then? Because, I mean, they obviously have to take tests for the baby. So, is weed on that test or no, I wonder. I don't know how Chicago works. Classes and certification courses since that time in the field of Triton College and then transferred to a four-year university, American Intercontinental. Um, I've also taken a number of classes and certification courses since that time in the fields of personal training, um, medical assisting, phlebotomy, um, language, um, cybersecurity, um, I said so personal training, phlebotomy, on, medical on, assisting, marketing, um, and, and several others. Um, so I've, I've kept myself active by studying the Bible, uh, you know, trying to summarize each chapter of the Bible and what it's about um, so that I can have a better understanding of the entire Bible overall. Um, I have done my absolute best to you know, live in the most righteous path that I can. I'm not perfect, I'm obviously human, um, as we all are, but I'm not here to be, you know, um, nor is Xavier, no one is here to be, you know, crucified or, or punished or, um, you know, scapegoated into taking the blame for any of the things that society is lacking. Um, I try to always put a positive spin on how this could have happened. I've prepared myself so well. I have substantial amounts of college debt, about $30,000 of college debt, no other bills. Um, I think maybe one ultrasound bill from when I was pregnant with Weston, but nothing other than that, no other debt. Um, and I am incredibly articulate and intelligent and been a very caring and compassionate full-time mother to my children until the time that all of this took place at which point in time I became a telephone mom, you know, and I'm seeing my children every few weeks or at the very beginning of the five years, I was seeing them several times a week. When I had my car, I would drive over there regularly. But as my car was defaced and situation and circumstances changed and I was on foot with no money, I would call them on FaceTime video every single day, several times a day. And it's still the same type of parenting. Where are you? Who are you with? What are you doing? What's going on in school? Do you need an eye doctor appointment? Uh, you know, et cetera, and so forth. But the physical she affection that I would be giving my children is not still the same type of parenting. Where are you? Who are you with? What are you doing? What's going on in school? Do you need an eye doctor appointment? Uh, you know, et cetera, and so forth. But the physical affection that I would be giving my children is not there. And that is unfair, not only to me, but mostly to my kids. Um, you know, kids need a hug sometimes. Kids need a mom who can just lay on the couch with them and watch a movie sometimes. It's been incredibly painful for me um, and I'm sure my children as well. Uh, I have a 10-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, and now a four-month-old son, two girls and two boys. Uh, I am still pumping breast milk for Weston. Um, I am very, very anxious most of the time as I'm sure most people would be if you were unlawfully separated from your children with no real explanation as to why or what needed to be done to resolve the issue. Uh, I've sent no less than 50 resumes per month, some months up to 300 resumes per month, um, as well as applied to places like McDonald's, Starbucks, um, you know, uh, other, other restaurants. Um, and entry level retail positions that I should not have to apply for. I have 10 years in healthcare of experience. I have home healthcare experience. Um, I'm a fantastic and loving mother. I'm a fantastic yeah, and loving okay, caregiver. Hey. Uh, and, I've, and I've been basically care, caregiving in one capacity or, or another since I was what? nine or 10 years old. Um, I was Who? the oldest of all the children in my family. So I was always taking care of and babysitting the kids at family parties when all the kids would go off into, you know, the playroom and the adults would be in the living room or the dining room, I would be the one in charge and I'd be the one caring for the babies and I'd be the one, you know, doing mostly everything and I have my entire life. Um, I have worked in the capacity of caregiver giver for a fully functioning older gentleman who uh, had some medical issues 
uh, like diabetes and blood pressure, but for the most part could drive and take care of himself. So it was like a lot of cleaning and arguing and please take your medicine and please don't be abusive and uh, things like that in a very informal way. Um, you know, he was more like a friend of mine who I just, you know, looked out for and kept his house clean and made sure he took his medicine uh, in exchange for, you know, three to four hundred dollars a week. That was, fab, you know, a fabulous job for me. And I do have letters of recommendation from his family, um, from the doctors I worked with at Northwestern. I was there for six years working for up to, I would want to say about 30 to 40 physicians. I don't have an exact count, but we had 20 primary care physicians that I was on call for diabetic education for. Um, I also had three endocrinologists who I worked, you know, every, every day with. Uh, Dr. Walter Stoller, Dr. Renee Aronson, Dr. Susan Burke. Um, I also worked with rheumatologists, Linda Maletti, uh, Carly Scamra, um, and Jolly Gopal. Um, I worked on call, so if one of the other assistants would need some, some coverage every once in a while, I would cover the, the uh, areas of neurology, gastroenterology, dermatology, front desk. Um, diabetic education was mine, um, nutrition. Um, you name it, you know, so um, pretty much everything. Uh, the only thing we didn't have at that practice was pulmonology. And then what we did have in plastic surgery, I, I never actually covered in, in the plastic surgery arena. So I do have a wide arrangement of experience. I've also worked um, when I was pregnant with Viviana and Lewis, my older two children, I worked in factories with my mother-in-law. Um, you know, so I worked through temp agencies and factories. I worked in retail. I've worked literally in every capacity you could imagine. I have um, letters of recommendation from all of the physicians that I worked with for more than two years. I have a letter uh, from my, my own internist that I've seen for the last 10 plus years, um, verifying and validating that I have always been following up with him regarding any sort of follow-up that's been needed. Um, and all of that has been submitted in a legal capacity to the powers that be with regards to the situation and resolution for my son and I. Um, I don't really know what more I can do. Uh, it is incredibly anxiety producing to be in this situation and have such little control over the outcome. If we were following the traditional algorithm of do the right things, um, in the face of adversity, I would have, you know, already been in a beautiful home with my four children driving. You would have done the car. right thing, right? Um, the world is flawed as I'm coming to learn and not everyone who deserves nice things has them. Um, and I, I do believe in God and I do believe that at some point, you know, the suffering has got to end. I've watched my mother work really hard her entire life. My mother worked two jobs when I was, you know, zero to 10 years old. So she waitressed on the weekends, um, on Sundays doing brunch, and she did a full-time office job throughout the entire week. And she still works more than full-time. She leaves at six or seven in the morning and doesn't get home until after six or 7 p.m. every night. Um, you know, my dad worked for 20 years in public works. Uh, on streets and sanitation. So my family, my, my stepfather works two or three jobs at a time. He started out as a broker or the stock exchange or some sort of stock exchange uh, person. Um, and then he moved the trade to his office at home and was still trading from home, his from, from his home office, but was more of a stay at home father with my brother while my mother worked full time. So my family is not a stranger to, you know, being, you know, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. Uh, this time of homelessness for me over the last two years, I have been faced with situations where you have no choice but to not follow standard procedural law. And, you know, you can't see me doing air quotes. Any judge, I'm sure, would have, by, by guidelines of the law, would have to allow for situations where people were forced, not coerced, coerced is its own thing and it's illegal, in certain capacities and contexts, but when it comes, you know, to a situation where a person is literally unable to survive, i.e. survive, survive in the sense of be okay, um, you know, and not at risk for substantial bodily harm, um, 
you know, when, when their choices are to do a certain action that may or may not be socially acceptable or die or be hurt, there has to be some sort of bridge in that gap of understanding. And that's, you know, basically the main lesson I learned in all of this is that we, we as a society have created people who are unable to work. I'm not one of them. I am able to work, but I've met a lot of people who are either not are able you? to because they don't have education or skills or because they have criminal backgrounds or because they have addictions who are either not able to because they don't have education or skills or because they have criminal backgrounds or because they have addictions and they're not able to work physically and mentally unable. And then we put them in positions where there are no resources and then we scold them for not dying. And that's been the biggest eye-opening, you know, um, part of all of this is that if people are outside in the street, especially in an urban area like Chicago or New York or Miami or, you know, any one of these larger towns, in small towns, it doesn't become a problem because what happens in small towns is, and this is a psychological principle, the closer you are to someone, the better you know them, the more difficult it is for you to be unaffected by their suffering. So in small towns, you see someone sitting outside of the grocery store each day, it's only a matter of time before the town comes together and creates a solution for that person. In larger urban networks, it becomes incredibly more difficult because until that person is established with a church or a group or oh a shelter service gosh. or something, Heather. everyone just walks by and passes the buck and says, well, the next person will help them or we don't have the resources to help them. Now, from my understanding, Hurry large up. cities are supposed to have shelters. They're supposed to have in a you know, shelter. phone numbers that, that can be called and where help shelter. is received. But from my experience, and you know, I'll, I'll let Xavier just verify this just so that you guys can have no doubt in your mind that this is the truth. Hey, babe. No doubt. We're, I'm going to have Xavier confirm this so we have no doubt in our minds. Yes, please, Xavier, let me know so I have no doubt in my mind that this is true because I believe everything Xavier says. Can you come here really quick? You have your headphones on? Don't have your headphones on. With regards to... Um, with, with regards to us going to Northwestern and asking for assistance, is it true that we called 311 as did Northwestern and several other hospitals and that no one ever came to give us shelter services? Yeah, and the cops called for us and said that 311 would come through. And no one ever came? No. He looks so, so different. You guys can see, it's, it's not just been a hospital or a police officer, it's been every hospital and every police officer. And we've, you know, gone above and beyond as two intelligent adults, you know, I don't have anything wrong with me. I'm not, I, I don't have the luxury of saying, well, I don't, I don't know how to pick up the phone and make a call and, and articulate my situation. So, you know, that's probably what happened. I was incredibly articulate and documented each articulation and shared it publicly either here on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on one of several platforms and through email with numerous different resources, lawyers, you know, um, just a lot of different people. Now, if, if I myself am a fully functioning and capable adult and I'm being, you know, prevented from or was being prevented from enlisting in the help of those services, what chance do people who are less articulate, less educated, uh, what chance do they have realistically? Now, there's an interesting, you know, also uh, impact and part of this that I like to bring up, which is that Unfortunately, if you are a sober person or just a poor person, there are far less resources available to you than if you are an addicted person or, you know, an incarcerated person. When people come out of incarceration, they are not released to the public uh, from prison. They are on parole and therefore have to go to a halfway house or some sort of uh, work release program. So it's, 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 a, it's a threat, not a threat, it's a blessing and it's, a, it's not a curse because we have the power to change it, but it's a blessing that these services exist, but it's not acceptable that we have people like veterans uh, for the United States of America who have worked in the Army or the Navy or any number of these positions. Uh, shout out to 
my ex's nephew who is graduating basic training this week um, for the army and his class. Thank you all for your service. Um, but my fear for these boys and girls is that they enter the armed Upward. forces and the government, um, you know, um, defenses thinking that they are going to be able to support themselves forever based on what they learn from these places. Now, how many veterans do we have in the street who, you know, don't have services? Um, and of the homeless people I've encountered, besides people who have drug issues, there have the largest other demographic I would name are homeless veterans. Um, you know, and that, that is unfortunate. We are in a very developed country uh, the United States of America and the world is at an all-time high for development of technology, resources, and communication. So allowing people to stay in a state of suffering outdoors with not enough, that is unacceptable. Ripping apart families, that is unacceptable. Um, this entire situation and process for me, from my opinion, and anyone who has a complete 360 degree perspective of what it has taken place would agree that this has been unacceptable uh, has by she most been pumping this whole time? standards and by most country standards and by most authority standards. So we are sitting tight. Um, as I said, we had a community meeting at this location um, where we were. Um, the person I was working with was um, the daytime supervisor, Noel, as well as the um, in between between the city of Chicago and the Equitable Solutions. He actually worked for Equitable Solutions and was the communication with the city of Chicago and went to numerous meetings with the city of Chicago. His name was uh, Aaron, right, Xavier? His name was Aaron. And, you know, he also verified that they would facilitate my son being, you know, coming home to us. Um, and he's been adamant about that being taken care of. The city of Chicago has been bending over backwards to offer solutions and allowing us, you know, to have a seamless transition to family housing if Weston was able to be back. So everyone on, from my perspective, has gone above and beyond to resolve these issues, which is why I'm still very confused uh, as to why the issues remain. Um, we went to a community meeting, which is what they call when all the residents, you know, of this um, shelter meet in one space and uh, the staff kind of come out and say, this is what's going to happen. These are the next steps. They offered everyone, um, you know, they offered to take everyone's name who needed a cell phone. Uh, fortunately for Xavier and I, we both have one and we have one backup one from the city. Um, they, they also said that with regards to next steps for housing, they would be putting a letter on our beds um, that would tell us where our apartment was. Um, many people have received their letter, Xavier and I still have not. So uh, after a period of, you know, since 2020, living in my vehicle for nearly now four or five years, tent, Airbnbs, hotels, I pray regularly for this resolution. I was under the impression this was already resolved and that we were just waiting on the letter. Um, and then we received word about three days ago that they don't know what's going to happen, that equitable solutions will not be, um, you know, the people funding us anymore and that we'll know more information hopefully Friday. So I'll be able to update mm. you guys then. Um, but. My hope for moving forward is, you know, that I am not just here redundantly banging my head against the same wall, um, that no one is in a position to be moving backwards, that we continue to make progress. Um, personally, I want to be with my children, as I've been saying regularly on all of the lives that I've recorded and, uh, you know, all of the various videos that I've been sharing and pieces of content that I've been sharing. Um, no one should be, you know, suffering in 2024. It, it is scientific fact that with technology and, you know, all of the advantages that we Mar have Escobar. in, you know, limiting that communication gap, that yeah, there James is no reason for human suffering CM, in the human experience CM. at all whatsoever. We have the tools to eliminate it completely. So um, in my intro to AI I'm class, I learned a lot about data sets and um, the functionality of artificial intelligence. And I'm really excited to continue learning deeper about those things. 
Um, I pray and pray and pray that I will be reunited with my children on a full-time basis very soon, uh, as I always have. Um, I am complying with every single thing that has been requested of me. Um, I am a fantastic mother. When I told my 10 year old oh my that I was being forced to take um, parenting what? classes. You told your daughter you were forced to do something? Oh my gosh. As well as has been requested of me. Um, I am a fantastic mother. When I told my 10 year old that I was being forced to take um, parenting classes as well as drug therapy classes, my daughter said, but wow. you don't do drugs. And don't they know you have three kids? My 10 year old, you know, so that if, is if, so if a 10 year old <laughs> can see that, um, it, there is no if ands or buts that the adults in the situation can see it. So, what is the causation? What is the causal impact, um, you know, that is resulting in these sorts of conditions? And how do we fix it? Um, and this is Heather Gillespie. I always identify myself with one of my tattoos because there have been a lot of impersonators. Um, there not has been one mother effing impersonator of this chick. Um, and this is Heather Gillespie. I always identify myself with one of my tattoos because there have been a lot of impersonators. Um, but here I am and everything that I have been dragged through over the last five years, um, I'm, I'm surely convinced that it, I'm being used, as I said a number of times, to communicate the struggle and suffering of a demographic that has been ignored. Um, and I pray, I pray and pray that um, there is some sort of intervention that results in, as I said, continued progress um, and that no one is forced to move back, that we're not dragged backward into uh, you know, more adverse and oppressive times and that we continue to push each other forward together um, in a unified effort and in an effort that doesn't result in anyone uh, experiencing homelessness. We have more than enough properties to house everyone. We have more than enough money to support each other. Um, you know, and I personally have been, you know, very, very much impacted by poverty over the last, well, over my entire life. Uh, uh, as I said, I, I was out of the home at 14 years old, not because I wanted to be, and I was in my own apartment at 17 years old. Um, so I know how it feels to be starting with absolutely nothing but three roommates and a minimum wage job. Um, and I don't want to go back to that. I'm 37 years old. I have three children and a baby, so four kids. Um, and I just desperately want my, my life back. The, you know, if I could be a stay at home mother, um, focused solely on my children, that would be ideal for me. Um, but I'm not, I'm not unwilling to earn my own income, you know, and I, and I have the skill set and the education to do so. Um, so as per usual, if you guys have any, if you know of any jobs, if you know of any, um, anyone that's hiring, I'm definitely looking for can you draw see Xavier in the back? So, as per usual, if you guys have any, if you know of any jobs, if you know of any, um, anyone that's hiring, I'm definitely looking for. As per usual, if you guys have any, if you know of any jobs, if you know of any, um, anyone that's hiring, I'm definitely looking for remote health care. Um, that would allow me to be with the baby um, and also something part-time because of all the services that I'm currently um, taking part in. Wait, I do need happens? to be um, having, you know, a part-time job only. I, I would only be available to work Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with my current schedule. And this is not me being, you know, bougie. I'm being mandated. I'm being forced by the government to take these courses or not be a part of my children's lives. Um which is heartbreaking for me. I, oh I, my I, gosh. If you know me, you know that I put my children if first you know always, me, you know me, you know every me, single you know time, and always will. Um, so, everyone have a great day. On my email, you guys all have it. Um, you guys can either use Coco, GoPro, Solo Look Production. Look at um, If it is an art thing or... So, 
Everyone have a great day. On my email, you guys all have it. Um, you guys can either use Coco GoPro Solo Production um, if it is an art thing or something for the GoPro Solo movement, which is basically a movement that I started, um, What's Your Impact, that requests that people look at their impact on themselves, their own lives, the people they love, and the rest of society, and give, you know, judge themselves, and see if there's anything they could be doing more of, and then hold themselves accountable, myself included, and starting with myself. Um, so Coco, what is he doing? GoPro Solo Production at gmail.com if you have any interest in being a part of those movements. Um, and if it's anything for employment, use my regular email, um, and it's on the resume that I have posted <laughs> on my Instagram. Um, so thank you guys so much. I continue to, you know, um, do the best that I can with what I've got. I finally got no, an $11 go. hair straightener the other day and put some curls in my hair and some moisturizer on my face. Um, I don't, don't care. think that people should have to struggle to afford shampoo and conditioner. Uh, I don't think that people should have to choose if they take a bath or not because they don't have soap. In the I don't line. think that people should have to wear dirty clothing. If you're a selfish person and you say, well, they should figure it out, then why don't you understand that these people, as they have odors, as they are unable to shower, as they are wearing dirty clothing, Xavier had to they go down. out into He's the general public again. and affect the rest of us. So universal basic incomes and social services in that regard is a win-win for everyone. All right, you guys, I'm going to hop off. We have to go now. Uh, we have our appointment today with our child. Have a great day. And please, if you guys have any advice that's constructive um, or opportunities for employment, please don't hesitate to reach out can't tell if Xavier is about to cry or if he's just squeezing him. Look how cute he is. Okay, not the boo part, Heather. Oh, look. <laughs> look at Xavier. Is, is, is he like, oh, I love you. I miss you so much. I'm going to do everything I can. Or was he just like squeezing him, like hugging him? Look at that mother. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that little boy. How could you not do anything for that? I would do anything for that boy. And I'm, I'm pretty straight. She says, we walk three to five miles, take a train and a bus to soak up every single minute. We love you so much. Not that one. Look at him. Look at him. Prayers on top of more prayers on top of those prayers for my life back. This is the only life for me. I'm a mom. I really don't know how these little Facebook ad works. It would aggravate me to have these on my Facebook page. Like my timeline, like my own personal Facebook. Like, she probably ain't even getting paid. Genius. I'm sorry, but the first thing I think about whenever I see a tent, I thought it was going to be a hack that they were going to have to use. I'm going to, I swear, if they end up in a tent and this is what Heather does, she's like, Xavier, let's pretend we're at the beach. <laughs> let's get two tents. Like, why would you need that, though? That's so sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of posting about things that you might need or do in the future if you got your shit together to get your kids back, why don't you just do what you need to do to get your kid or kids back? You know what I'm saying? Same. I am a survivor of WWASP schools, Tranquility Bay, and Cross Creek Academy AMA. So then, of course, she had to go on to, you know... To put in her input. This was my family. The Integrity family. I had have no criminal record. And was sent here after my mother was coerced. And shown a video of a resort slash summer camp style school. Misleading marketing material and videos of children in street clothes playing sand volleyball on the ocean. The articles about the abusive nature of this place are real and true. And I know there's a lot of people who don't know about this, so I might actually look at that article real quick.
this is my thing. If something like this was to, like, happen to her, okay, whoever this happened to, because obviously this happened to uh, plenty of girls out there, and I really hope and pray that they were healed from it, and I think it would be really awesome if they used that, like, they turn around and have, like, a freaking testimony for it, and they helped other girls and other even men, like anybody, I hope that they use it to help other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really hope that they use, I think that's the biggest thing and that really, really turns stuff around is whenever you look at it a different way. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of being like, why did this happen to me? I know it's going to take a minute, but after you process that, don't be down too long. You need to get back up and then realize, okay, this happened to me for a reason. I'm not going to let it happen to me for no fucking reason. I'm going to make it make sure it happened to me and there's something good that's going to come from this. And that's, that's what people have to do. At five years old, on my first day of kindergarten, a car crashed into my house through the living room and into the kitchen while my mother and sister and I were upstairs and asleep. Emergency response teams arrived and turned the engine off only minutes or seconds before a possible explosion. I still went to school that day. On my birthday, freshman year, I was abandoned in a third world country for 11 and a half months, Tranquility Bay. I lived in an apartment or away from my family unit from the age of 15 to 16 years old, got my first apartment at 17, Got pregnant with my first daughter at 19 and was married by the age of 20. Had my son just 8 weeks after my 22nd birthday. Worked in factories and retail while earning college credits for various clinical and administrative healthcare programs. Divorced by 24 and in another long-term relationship with the father of my third daughter. Work working full-time while attending university. Had my third daughter in 2013 at the age of 25, 10 years of healthcare experience, and a phenomenal resume list of references at 27 years old when I walked out of my job of six years at Northwestern Hospital with no plan. I now have a fourth child, a little boy born four weeks after my 37th birthday and after suffering more than four years of homelessness with no history of drug addiction and a proven history of being able to care for myself and my family that was only the beginning first of all how in the world were you caring for yourself whenever you're homeless in a tent and while this is like a thing and we're talking about this i don't know what if what exactly happened heather there i'm not i i don't know what happened to her so i cannot say I'm not taking anything away from her. All I'm saying is, from the way she speaks, she doesn't really talk much about it. She just kind of mentions it. She just likes to mention that she was there because she knows it was one of the most popular places got, that got found out and got shut down. So, it sucks that she lies, but it's also good if it's true, and she's not one of the people who got, you know, severely abused and hurt and art and assaulted, all that, all that, you know what I'm saying? It seems like all of that happened later in life whenever she was old enough to make the decisions, you know? Again, not taken away from if something, if something happened, I'm not taken away from that. I'm just saying, it's just from what I... What I pick up and what I hear and what she she doesn't ever say or talk about. We walk three to five miles, take a train or bus to soak up every single minute. We love you so much. She said it's clear to see when I was most frustrated or hopeless. And it's obvious that I've gone above and beyond to advocate for myself and find my way. Everything she shares, it always says this content isn't available right now. It's so aggravating. I really wish she would stop with this whole above and beyond, you know? Like infinity and beyond. Like Buzz fucking light year. Like what why did you start using those words? What stop? Like that's something that she's gonna start saying all the time, like et cetera and so forth. 